hug each other. Give me more gain in my monitors and the house. We've got to perfect this. All of you that are watching us by way of our streaming service, Virtual Sanctuary, you are listening to the Shabbat Church, better known as the 1403. We are the place of passion. If ever you are in Central Florida, feel free to visit our two services. One is on Wednesday at 7.30. The other one is on Sunday at 10.30. We have a saying here. We hear it on Wednesdays to experience it on Sunday. I said we hear it on Wednesdays to experience it on Sunday. God bless you. Heaven smiled upon you. You may be seated. God is good, isn't he? I said God is good, isn't he? He's good all the time. And all the time. God is good. I want to thank, we have about a hundred of you in the sanctuary that, that was not afraid to rock with your pastor tonight. I know folk are human and some folk like a reason to stay home, but when you're in a season, in a series anticipating miracles you have to make sacrifices I want to thank you all who went with me on Sunday thank God through all of the adversity and somewhat spiritual warfare that we all experienced God got the glory We pray that we were a blessing to revive Tampa. Uh, Pastor and Prophet Anthony Brown, clap for him as we pray for him. He's doing much better. He's out of the hospital, and we appreciate it. I thank you all so much for being out here tonight. I was going to be here by myself if nobody came. And I was going to teach from this pulpit to the world because I'm dedicated to Jesus. He's been too good to me. Touch somebody and tell me he's been too good to you. And he's done so much for me, I cannot tell it all. want to thank God for our executive pastor on this evening. Overseer Sonia Mixon. Her word on last week still resonates. Powerful messenger. And we need to thank God for the gifts that God has placed in each other. A lot of people feel that they can preach better, but can you reach better? Some of y'all can holler loud. You can holler louder than me, but you ain't saying much. It's whether what you do has power. One of my inner circle sons said, you didn't tell me she could preach like that. I said, I don't have to talk. You just sit there. You'll hear it. Amen. Only firecrackers make a lot of noise, but a bomb explodes in silence. So we thank God for her, our associate pastor this evening, Pastor Jay. And he is another powerful explosive. with the word of God, with the word of God is in his mouth. It's in his mouth, the oil is upon him. 
Uh, we thank God for our senior father, Father Hope, on this evening. And his lovely wife, Dr. Barbara. We thank God for all of you that are present. I was extremely excited about the word of the Lord on Sunday that God spoke about our own Elder Charles Curry. For those who were there, I don't hear you. I'm a child of God that believes in miracles. I almost felt one, but I'm a child of God that believes in miracles. Do me another favor. Let us pray about something, and that is I am getting so, uh, how do I choose these words, spiritually concerned. I'm looking for a better word. My spirit is getting very sensitive to the trash of social media. I'm going to ask, because you're going to do what you want to do, but I need to ask my members, stop filling your spirit with social media trash. P. Diddy is not your business. Some of you are laughing, but I'm not playing. You have done nothing for him. You don't know his number. His address, you don't even know his songs. Don't comment on what you don't know. Some of you are spending hours tracking trash, but only five minutes with a Bible. Look at someone, tell them, get to know Jesus a little better. I don't want to know about Justin Bieber and what they're doing. Y'all laughing, but I'm not playing. Some of you would be a mess, but you ain't in, but, but you ain't famous enough for nobody to write about you. And you doing worse than P. Diddy. This should teach you, I think I'm supposed to be a pastor. This would teach you that the life of millionaires and billionaires are not easy. What doth it profit a man? Now I have a little more to say in this that I won't because my siblings are connected to this group. So when you're talking about stuff you don't know, you're talking about my family. And they could easily throw your pastor in there because his brother's name is on the list. You've got to learn to live a higher level than the one that's trying to keep you down. The more known you become, there's going to be a target on your back. So all you talking about, one day I'm going to be a millionaire. You need to know what that comes with. And he was not just a millionaire. Sean was a billionaire. And the same people that make you can break you. You ought to thank God for a normal job, being able to go home, kiss your children good night. I don't hear nobody. Have your wife take her out somewhere and not worry about the paparazzi coming behind you. Let us pray. There are preachers' names involved. 
Y'all have to stop and recognize whose team you on. One of my sons, his birthday is on the 28th. Bruce Jackson will have a birthday. Oh, I don't hear you. On the 28th of September. He is an accountable young man. He's accountable. You see him all the time. Yes, all of them are, but they have other gigs and things they do, but they make sacrifice to make sure that they try to yes, do their general schedule around. Look who just walked into the church. These applause are for you. They want you to know that we love you. You may be seated. The prayers of the righteous. Come on, y'all. They availeth much. And we appreciate Jesus Christ for all that he has done for us. It could have been another way on Sunday. But our God is an awesome God. I want y'all to pray for people who are being attacked. Will y'all do that for me? You can pray for my family, but we've got prayer warriors, but I would ask that you join in because I love my family. And uh, the cost for being famous and being out front and dum dum ditty and yep, yep, you, sometimes you've got to pay to play. But I thank God for pulling me up out of the muck and the mire. And even as a known preacher, it's almost the same. The biggest meal for social media is a preacher that no one agrees with. So you should be paying, you should be praying for your pastor on a regular basis. Because they say I preach a word that ain't in the Bible. That's the word out on me. Is that man be saying stuff that ain't in the Bible. That's the word on me. No, no, no. I see why they say it, because I go a little further than most. Even Bishop said to me one day hanging out, he said, Pop, I need to talk to you about this uh, pool of saloon. He said, I ain't never heard that like that before. He didn't say it wasn't in the Bible, but he was wondering how did he read it and not see that. It's not how smart you are, it's how sensitive you are and how passionate you are towards the people of God that I don't want my people eating normal meals. So, let's go to one tonight. You ain't got to worry about work tomorrow because y'all going to make an excuse not to go. We're still using the theme miracles, but tonight, well, last week it was called A Miracle from the Mud. Did you enjoy that one, A Miracle from the Mud? We're going back there, but not right now. Right now I'm doing a subtopic for two folk who will jump, then sit, A Miracle in the Meal. We had a miracle in the mud. Now I need a miracle in the meal. Let me first lay the groundwork because I'm going to try not to hold you long, sir. 
Uh, Dr. Richard Wellington begged me to have a Zoom. He thought it said service was canceled. He was like, I need your voice tonight. I said, well, meet me at the church. Because it might be canceled for those, but it ain't canceled for me. This particular story, let's talk about it, is about the feeding of 5,000. Let me put some words in here. The miraculous feeding of 5,000. Give me a little gain in here. A little gain, not volume. Not EQ. When a particular, thank you, story is written in the gospel, parable or whatever, fictitious reality, Everything in the Bible is to be observed. Talk to me. But they say when something is written in one gospel is also found in another, you need to pay closer attention. Because that means it was so important that the disciples saw it from a different angle. A lot of people don't like you because you don't see what they see from the same angle, perspective. Prism, lenses. Y'all want good teaching or a quick one right there to go on home? If a storm came, y'all do know y'all are in the only shelter in Orlando. This building is the only building that can withstand 200 mile an hour winds in the whole city. See, you didn't know that. The only building in the whole city of Orlando. You safe. Safer than your house. If you run into any of these walls, you're going to knock yourself out. Ain't none of these walls sheetrock. Take a run. That's why I'm saying when you take them laps, be extremely careful. And when a certain story, associate pastor, is written in three of the gospels, we then in school say it's very important. But very rarely, what did I say? Thank you. Is a story written in all four Gospels? See, those who call themselves doctors in life, they don't study the simple things in life. Jesus' birth is not in every Gospel. See, it's very important. That's why it is logged in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but it's not in John. Come on, wake up and talk to me. John does not care about lineage. John is what we call a Christ fanatic. So he bypasses the fleshly 40 and 2 generations, and he opens up with, in the beginning was the word. I only got one minute. The word was with God. The word was God. Without him was nothing made that was made. He doesn't talk about his mama. He don't talk about his daddy. He don't talk about his brother. John is so uh, full of Christ that he has the nerve. It's only in his gospel where he calls himself the beloved disciple. See, no other gospel calls that man that but his own. But when a story, I promise you it's going to get good, is chronicled, logged in all four Gospels? 
I had to read them all. Because two of them sound like they're clashing. Mm -hmm. uh, who asked me to do a Zoom and ain't talking to me? What was his name? Richard? Richard. One seminary teaches that the first gospel written, if it's in chronicle order, is Mark, not Matthew. See, you're learning something, but you're not digesting it. What if you was on a show and they say, what is the real first gospel for a million dollars? Some of y'all would have lost a million dollars because you've been like Matthew. Mark. Let us also remember Luke is not a named disciple. But he's blessed to write a gospel. Am I loading some things into you? Because every now and then we need more than a preacher to talk to us. We're in a day where professionals and preachers must agree. So Luke must agree with Mark and Matthew that what Jesus did was a miracle. Especially as it pertains to the physical body. You can't write your book, star in it, and proofread your own book. Somebody got to agree with you somewhere outside of yourself unless that's a lot of narcissism. Now, some of you don't know what narcissism is because you're just a preacher. But most preachers are narcissistic. They grade themselves. They call themselves. They license themselves. They push themselves. They're about themselves. That's why I try to tell many Christian women, stop praying for one. Because we ain't going to really recognize you. Get a man with a career. Can I talk to y'all like Luke? Dr. Barbara, I don't know why you ain't talking louder. Because I know it's hard for you to put up with this man. When you have a black short man called an apostle, that's a whole lot of, we got to measure up when you're short. Don't have a six pack and wife taller than you and children, people. See, y'all only, y'all laughing, but this is the truth. Most of you won't know it because you've been seen by the Holy Ghost, but not by a therapist. Some of you don't just need a pastor, you need a psychiatrist. Because your problem is not demonic, it's emotional, it's mental. And it only becomes a demon when it continues to go unaddressed. A demon is mental illness gone unaddressed. That's why when most of the folk in the Bible got delivered from demons, even the man called Legion, am I boring you all? Even the man called Legion from one person that was jumped, it said he was clothed and in his right mind. Some of you are clothed, but you ain't in your right mind. That's why you dress better than you talk. You dress better than you speak. You overdress, you underspeak. You want to know what spirit is running a person? Let them keep talking. I know I make whatever man the greatest wife he ever had. So why you not married? Every man missing you? See? There's a mental problem there. When I had my stroke. 
And I was paralyzed. And along with my paralysis, broke. They were twins. I was not prospering, nor was I in health. Y'all need to. I was not attracted or attractive to certain women that I was attracted to. But once that money came, the face still twisted. Still five, six. It was like, you the shortest man that I ever really was attracted to. Let me tell you something. When your situation gets funded, all right, I'm going I'm to leave it alone. That's a cockeyed, that's a club foot, that's a missing finger, that's alopecia. Once that situation gets well funded, it's easier for folk to change their perspective. Like I think women who could work that won't work are very unattractive. Oh, you ain't got to clap for me. I'm just giving you my perspective. You waiting on somebody to take care of you? Yeah, okay. You probably saying, what did all that have to do with your sermon? What do you do when your life is like this scripture? Hear me. And you're sitting under preaching or teaching, but have nothing to eat. How does that make you rationalize your situation? I go to church. I'm always there. I praise God. I serve him. I do this, that, and the third, and I am on E. I drive this far one way, two ways. I drive this far. I support everything, the vision of the church. I sing on the praise team and the choir. I try to make rehearsals. I sing in the band. I play in the band. I got to come back. And when I get ready to sit and digest my life, there's nothing on my plate. You that are clapping, you're going to catch it. And it's my young adults. Let me give a disclaimer. This is not for anyone lazy. Dr. Mixon, when I went to study this, this story was in all four Gospels. Let me also give you one more tidbit, tad bit of information for a three-fold talk. This ain't the first time Jesus fed thousands because there's another place where he fed 4,000. Look somebody and tell him he keeps up in his numbers. Just going to tell me. The numbers don't matter. How you eat the meal does. Don't worry, I'm about to prove it. There's a hundred of us in here tonight and only 30 will go home filled. The other 70 will still go home hungry, worried, depressed, thinking about bills because they did not digest the meal. Let's start in Mark, because it's the first gospel for real. Chapter 6, beginning at verse 31. Then I'm going to go to the other gospels, but not read it all. Mark 6, verse 31. And he, and he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place, rest for a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure or so much to eat, which meant they worked through lunch. I don't hear nobody. They were 
too busy to stop for a meal as Brown was on Sunday. Worked so hard that he forgot to eat. They departed into a desert place by ship privately. The people saw them departing and many knew him, ran afoot thither to all the cities, outwent them and came together unto him. They found Jesus even in his private place. When you are a valuable commodity, it's impossible for you to hide. Now, what I am displeased with for you that get blessed by valuable people, I need talkers, is this. If you find me, fund me. Uh-oh, it just got quiet. I have people in my circle of associations that are lawyers, attorneys, and judges. They'll give me advice, but if I need them to take it further, I should not be wanting to take advantage of the relationship by asking them do this for free. Now, if they volunteer to do it, that's favor. But if you cut in my personal life for my professional advice if you find me fund me why is it quiet in the middle now oh I see when demons start moving no one has to do anything for any of us Bishop has several businesses, but he owns a food truck that I do know of, makes some of the best sauce and all of this stuff. And I sat with him and gave him some ideas. He took them, he used them for free, right? That's because I gave it to him in the setting of association and want to see him blessed. But if his truck is outside, even though I'm his pastor, he can say, take pastor this meal. But if he does not freely offer the meal and I want food on his truck, I cannot say, hey, give me five slabs because I'm your pastor. If I find him, y'all don't hear me. See, the reason why y'all ain't talking, because this is one of our church's issues. Y'all feel entitled. You have an important person's phone number. You better learn how to respect that number. Because the only reason why I ain't changed it is because of other important people. But some of you, you don't know what to do with that number. It takes people a long time to reach a place where they can eat. Look at somebody and tell them, you don't know how long I had to work to eat like I eat. Tell them, some people eat a meal. I'm a buffet kind of guy. I, when I eat, I like variety. No, no, I didn't say a warmed over nasty buffet from China buffet. I said, if I look in my fridge, there's a multitude of different things that I can eat at one time and it not be the same. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm buffet blessed. And if you're not, you're going to be. Verse 33, the people saw him departing, knew him, ran the foot, overran them, came to him. Jesus, when he came out, saw much people. He was moved with compassion towards them because they were as sheep, not having, here I go, a shepherd. The only reason why he's talking to them is he knows who's been talking to them has not been feeding them properly. When you eat improperly, you live improperly. Will y'all write that? When you eat improperly you live improperly bishop i'm humble i just thank god for my one bedroom is better than nothing you're right i've been there and i thanked him but if you sit under teaching long enough 
your faith will frustrate where you live. Because faith cometh by hearing. Y'all going to miss it. And once you keep sitting under healthy preaching, you'll start getting frustrated with the thing you once thanked God for. And now you want to ask God to give you a J-Bass. Oh, y'all, enlarge my coast. It's not that I'm ungrateful. I'm eating too good. Oh, only five people. It's not that I'm ungrateful, but the way my leader teaches, it makes me want to reach for more. Can y'all give me that kind of amen? I am using the Bible to make you have to reach for more. You're getting frustrated because my teaching and our leader's teaching is frustrating how you're living. That's what it's supposed to do. If anyone feels like God's about to make you a happy meal, shout yes. You'll catch it later. You'll catch it in about 20 minutes. He didn't say they didn't have a shepherd. He said they were like sheep not having a shepherd. He also admits something through what we call English literature. He admits this for one person. I don't care if it's Richard or if it's Vickers, somebody catch this, or Curry. If they had shepherds, their shepherds had no compassion. He basically admits, I have compassion as I teach. It's hard to eat a meal from somebody who cooks for you who says they don't like you. If they don't like you and you know it, you think the food's poison. You don't care. You'd be like, nah, I'm, I'm good. And we're living in a day of nasty leadership. We really are. No compassion. Insensitive, desensitized to the needs of others. And for this reason, people come to church, enjoy the singing, can't enjoy the word. Because those who are up running the service are probably nasty and their posture don't speak to people. And then this makes the folk that came to eat go home hungry. I'll give you an example. I have people that work in my office some of them are part of the bishop's cabinet, some of them are adjutants, and some of them are my sons. And every now and then, all three of them offices clash. Bishop cabinet said, I got this for bishop. The adjutant said, well, he don't really want that. And then my son said, who told you that he don't eat that? You got three different mindsets trying to say what the father wants, right? Look how quiet. You don't hear them say amen now, do you? Adjutant supposed to have the keys to my car, gave it to him coming in, going out. One of my sons gets it, starts the car, put the stuff in. I then get in the car, go home thinking I got my stuff. I call my son who gave me the keys. Where my stuff? Oh, you got to call Richard. No, Negro, you started my car. You put the stuff in the car. What you say? It ain't Richard's fault, it's yours. But then they start blaming other. It's not about blame. It's that people in leadership roles have no social skills to know how to communicate in a higher level. But everybody can lead a service. But can nobody have pleasant conversations? Now, what I just did is what I preached 
online for two folk who would catch me. I showed you two different gospels to one thing. And to certain people, they don't want to work in the office no more because they keep being attacked. To another group, I'm not attacking them. I'm trying to show them how to do it. But if y'all don't talk and I got to talk to both parties, then that means you're killing the whole system. So these disciples can make Jesus look like something he's not. Because one of them can say, I'm closer than the other. James, John, and Peter can say we're closer than Thomas, Andrew, and them. And then Thomas, Andrew, and Bartholomew say, well, we just won't hang with y'all. Now Jesus got an inner circle. Then Peter can say, I'm the closest to him because on the day of Pentecost, I spoke. I cut off Malchus' ear. You didn't do anything. Then Judas could get up from the dead and say, I actually love them more than all of you because I killed myself knowing that I betrayed the best thing of my life. Everybody can defend themselves. But in the midst of defending yourself, how do you make the ministry look? Well, I'm an elder. I don't care what you are. I'll give you another spin on this, then we'll heal it because I know Vic is strong enough. Vickers is one of the most passionate teaching people for rehearsal. I mean, loves it. Wife does all his reels and they go through Walmart and Kmart and Target and go around and get picture frames and kissing and hugging and dating 31 years. And girl, I'm glad you date him. But no one, no one, Richard was first and then came Curry and all of them are blessed in their field of music. He directed the biggest choir. He directed the most important choir. He has a whole project that's been out since the 90s on Apple. Nobody else has a whole project. It's already selling. But the one that brought everybody together that made them sing like they were recording people for that event that Montez did was Chantel. Now, I don't understand how she can get out of them what you can't. Now, the wrong approach would be for you to say, you did it for Chantel, why you won't do it for me? Maybe Chantel has an approach and a passion for something more than music. It's called people. You cannot have a passion for your ministry and not have a passion for people. I know we can sing much better. Can you treat me much better? The young lady called me. I had to tell her no. She said, Bishop, a church wants me to sing with them on the second Sunday. She must think she's Charles Curry. And I tried to audition with brother vickers for the praise team but i've not been able to audition and i want my ministry to sing she said i still sing but i wanted to audition with greater part i said no you cannot that's the first time i said no and i love her she was like huh i said absolutely not i said people just don't deny you an audition or anything because you can sing or not it's whether you can get along with the folk you singing with See, the problem is, in New York, if you can't get along, you can't sing because... See, I can't get y'all to clap. You've got to first teach people the Bible. I'm about to read it. When Jesus brought them together, the Bible said he began. Look at verse 34. Y'all are going to get me in trouble. Jesus, when he came out, so much people moved with compassion toward them. Because they were as a sheep having no shepherd. And once you see that, he began to not feed them, to teach them many things. You got to teach more than what you're good at. You got to be able to talk to them after and be like, is everything all right at home? Because I noticed you were late and normally you're not smiling. Are you actually concerned about me 
or what makes you look good. Now, some of you feeling a little, but if you're eating this right, I'm setting you up to succeed. Because if you go like you are now into the big world, you're fired in a week. And once your name gets smeared out there, ain't no second chance. You can have a passion for what you do, but you got to have a compassion for who's allowing you to do it. That's why one is called passion and the other one is compassion. I'm going to blow your mind shortly, Bishop. Taught him many things and the day was now spent. His disciples came up to him saying, this is a desert place and now the time is far past send them away that they may go into a country round about until the vigil villages by themselves bread i hear you why is he reading so fast i'm staying in teach mode for they have for they have nothing to eat he answered and said give ye them to eat which means anybody that can point out a person's problem better have the answer if you're going to bring it up, you better be able to talk about it because if not, you're trespassing. If somebody say, where do you live? I need to know why you want to know where I live. And my comeback line is always where you live. God said, that ain't your man. My comeback line is, where's yours? When people ask a question, you ought to see if they got an answer. Be like, let me ask you the same thing. Is that your hair? Is that your hair? Some of you are laughing because you know how you talk about people behind their backs. But they also talk about you. They said, shall we go and buy 200 penny worth of bread and give them to eat? He said unto them, how many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they said, five and two fish. He commanded them to sit down the companies upon green grass. Forty sat down in ranks of hundreds and by fifties. When he had taken five loaves, two fish, looked up to heaven, blessed it, break it, break the loaves, gave them to the disciples to set before them. For the two fishes divided he among them all, and they did eat all, all did eat and were filled. Y'all are not with me. And they took up 12 baskets full of fragments and of the fishes. And they did eat of the loaves. And they that did eat of the loaves were about 5,000 men. Can you, can you put the scriptures in bold letters, not them little letters for me right now? Can you go to the next two or three verses after this? Because I'm doing something strategic. Okay, it's not on my screen, but can we, thank you. Straightway he constrained his disciples, I'm doing this for a reason, to get it to a ship and go to the other side. You see what situation happens right after? No, I need folk who will help me preach. He tried to get away from them the last time. And they found him. Now he's fed them and he's trying to get away again. I understand folk who are always helping people try to get away. Because you're tired of being used. See, I don't hear nobody. Oh, Lord, here they come. Let me get my car. Let me turn around. Lord, I'm going to act like I don't see you. Because every time it's either money, gossip, conversation. You try to avoid certain things. 
I can't get help. And you that ain't talking is because you're the one we avoiding. But you try to avoid certain people. Because they're always eating. They're hungry for your attention. Hungry for your love. Hungry for you to mention their name. Hungry for compliments. I was at, and they use any situation, pitiful or plentiful, just to advertise your attention. For the record, Jesus was trying to get away. Matthew 14, beginning at verse 15. The second gospel. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place. Time has passed. Send these folk away that they may go to villages by themselves. Victuals, which means, Lord, the fast food restaurants are about to close in 15 minutes. Y'all going to make you need to close down your sermon and let these folk go home. Now, let me say this for one person because y'all look guilty tonight. If they can cut in on Jesus, hearing the best teacher of their life and be worried more about food than they are what he's saying, I know why y'all the way y'all are too. It's going to be your best sermon that's going to get you out of your worst situation. But if you don't digest that sermon your situation gets more severe. Then it becomes so severe that now all you want is a word from the Lord. Now you have an appetite. It's going to get good for God. Because the situation you're in has become too severe. Do I have any support out of you, hundred? Verse 17, they say unto him, we only have. No, Jesus said unto them in verse 16, they need not depart. Y'all ain't got to go somewhere outside the church to get what you want. You just sick because you're looking for it everywhere, but where you need to be looking. Because you think the word of God does not promote your salary, but it does. You think the word of God is not stronger than insulin, but it is. You think the word of God is not stronger than your divorce, but it actually is. So you're out there spending money on professionalism when the word of God is trying to do it itself. So now you're broke trying to fix what only God can fix, but you want God to fix it outside of his space. I'm going to shock everybody soon. I don't lie. All of you are going to be happy in a minute. Said, we have five loaves and two fish. He said, bring them hither to me. They don't have to go nowhere. And he commanded them to sit down. And he took the five loaves, two fish, looking up to heaven, blessed it, break it, and gave the loaves to, to who? To the disciples and the disciples to the multitude. Did y'all read what I just read? He blessed it. What did it say? He blessed it. Break it. And gave it. They did all, I'm sorry, they did all eat and were filled. Took up the fragments that remained, 12 basket full, verse 21. And they that had eaten were about 5,000 men. But now Matthew says this does not include women and children. Come on, that's another part of the story. That God will never take care of you and leave your family out. Oh, you don't catch it, huh?
Mark didn't mention no children. Mark didn't mention no women. So every now and then you got to go through a season of feeling left out while you eat leftovers. Tell somebody, tell them, I don't mind if I'm left out as long as I'm eating leftovers. <laughs> leftovers are for the folk who get left out. Now, Matthew and Mark, I'm about to go to fire. Matthew and Mark are okay but John told you he, he focused on Jesus. John going to tell us some stuff that Matthew and Mark didn't tell us. Let me first say this and see if a millionaire, future millionaire in this church would jump up because of the meal I'm feeding. Matthew and Mark wrote like it was their fish and their loaves. They said, we have two small fish. Who we? See, that's why y'all ain't talking. Who's bread? How you claim what you don't have? And just take what belongs to somebody else. I'm almost there. Y'all got to trust me. John is close to Jesus. Let's read his version of the same story. Then when I get to Dr. Luke, I'm going to give you three points and let you go. Here's John's story. Hold on, hold on. Go back to Matthew's story. Go back to Matthew. Go to verse 21 again. Go back to Matthew chapter 14. And let's read three more verses and see what happens after his perspective. Go to verse 22. Straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to go into a ship. So Matthew and Mark are seeing the same events. All right, remember that. Let's go to John chapter 6, verse 1 through 13. Let's hear an in-depth story. As I read it, you who see it better, I want you all to talk to me. Because the word miracle was not mentioned in Mark, nor in Matthew. So that meant somebody took this meal for granted. That's why God ain't blessing some of you. Because you think you're entitled to a miracle. Telling him what his words say. Lord, your words say. God said, hold on now, slow down. I know what it says. I wrote it so you could obey it. But don't tell me what it says unless you're doing what it says. High five somebody and tell them, I'm taking all this. I'm, I'm, I'm taking all this. De Deacon Edward, stay with me because I'm going to shock you. We'll talk about it. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is also called the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him. This is telling you why. Because they saw... Your Matthew nor Mark told us this. They're following him because they saw the miracles which he did on them that were diseased. Let me talk to three who's supposed to be saved and filled and anointed and everybody got a ministry but ain't nobody got a mouth tonight. Until you do your ministry, whatever that is. They are not following him for the fishes and the loaves. They're following him because they're seeing cancer heal, diabetes, 
blind eyes opening. They are not following him for fishes and loaves. They're following him because the last ministry they followed had none of what they see. If you're the best preacher in the world, why no miracles follow your ministry? The Bible said, and they went forth, Mark, uh, uh, Mark chapter 16, verse 17, 18, 19, they went forth preaching the word, signs following, confirming what they preached. Where's the confirmation of your sermons? We will not have an active ministry with great teachers and no miracles. We are going to force God's hand and tell him we believe everything. Oh, y'all are quiet. That your word says. I guarantee you three people in here sick going to be healed by 12 midnight when they go home. No, hold on. You ain't got to clap. My words are guaranteed. Why? Because I have a compassion. Not for preaching. Not for prophesying. I want to see you get it. All you need to get it is somebody in your circle that's talking to God on a consistent basis about your situation. And that's where we're back to that scripture. I wish above all things. Oh, y'all, that ye may prosper. Be in health. Even as your soul. And the soul prospers by the meal that it eats. So God said, I can't bless you outside of the meal. So I called this sermon for when I preach it the next Sunday, the meal that heals. Will you tell somebody, this is the meal that heals. Just because you have surgery and they take something don't mean you heal. That's a fact. The doctor gets what it can, but only God can get it all. That's, that's a fact. And if you don't say amen on that, you're going to lose a few more pieces of yourself. He was wounded for our transgression. Come on, talk to me. Bruised for our iniquities. I feel power. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we, not you, we, there's no selfishness to that scripture. There's no secret what God can do, what he's done for others. He'll do for you with his arms wide open. He'll pardon you. There is no secret. Y'all playing with me. Let's hear what the snitch John has to say. Because you're going to find out for two screamers that the people never said they were hungry. The people were happy eating the meal. Not the physical meal. The teaching of Jesus had them captivated until one of his disciples got so familiar that they watched time. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. 
Miracles don't work within your time frame. Time for me to take my meds. Time for me to get sleep. Time for you to die. No matter how sick you are, your sickness never tell you you can't go to work. Because you got to pay the health bill. But it will tell you need to go home. We in church too long. Jesus in this text from one screamer, whoever you are, is the most longest winded preacher you have ever heard in your entire life. He was up from sun up to sundown to where somebody had to tell him what time it was. Master, this is a desert place. Creatures and animals going to come out soon. The market closing. You've been up for a very long time. You can't teach him everything in a day. How you tell eternity how to handle time? you tell Kairos how to deal with Kronos? Oh, I got seven of you. The rest of you, you didn't eat the meal. That's why you're going to still have to take 12 pills tonight before you go to bed. But three of y'all going to take one and throw it up because you healed by the miraculous power of the Holy Ghost. And I mean it. Let's hear the snitch. Hold on. Verse 3. Jesus went up into a mountain and there he sat with his disciples. He only planned on teaching his disciples. He's about to find out the ones he was about to teach are the ones that weren't hungry. Got to be careful who you let sit with you too often. See, nobody. They don't care if you healed the sick, blind eyes open. The Bible said the Passover of the Feast of the Jews was nigh. John gives us more information. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come with him, he said unto, we ain't never heard Matthew and Mark mention the name, Philip. Jesus said to Philip, y'all ain't talking, when shall we buy bread that these may eat? That if Philip is the one that cut in on the sermon and said, Master, the restaurants are closing. See, God will only protect you till you keep doing it the same way. Then he's going to tell folk your name. Some of you ducking, but your name's about to surface. Verse 6, this he said to prove him because Jesus already knew what he was going to do. He knew that there was a food scarcity. He knew that the people sat had needs, but he also knew he wanted to see how bad they needed it by how long they would sit. Oh, y'all quiet. Let's see how bad they actually want it. Is the miracle more important than their job, more important than sleep, more important than this, that, and the other? They want to really eat? Let's see. I hear you over here. I don't know who you are. You said, but Bishop, you told us that they didn't follow him for the fishes and the loaves. Good. I'm glad you remembered that. Philip answered, Philip, see Philip name in there. Philip answered, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. Let me say this and get three folk to jump up real quick. This is the text proving that they had money. But money was not the answer.
They had enough money to give 5000 a little bit. They're not starving. They're just hungry. Hold on. One of his disciples, y'all going to miss it. Here come some more names. Andrew. Simon Peter's brother saith. There's a lad here, which meant that food was not yours. Them two fish. Oh, yeah. And five loaves, why y'all quiet, was not yours. It also means, y'all ain't talking in the back, that somebody's always looking at what you have. And they want to take credit for your gift, bringing it to Jesus, right? They're not reading with me. I got people standing here not talking to me. And there's a lad, verse 9, which had five barley loaves. And John makes it plain, not just two fish, two small fish. And then Andrew and Philip tag team, and they come up with, what are they among so many? Jesus said, make the men sit down. Now, there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in the number of 5,000. Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed it to the disciples. Disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. When they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain. Let nothing be lost. Therefore, they gathered unto them together, Fill 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remain over and above unto them that had eaten. What's the next three verses? I don't see the ship no more. See, y'all don't want to learn Bible study. I thought we'd get on the boat after this. Then those men which had seen the miracles that Jesus did said, this is of a truth a prophet. Why y'all why, why y'all get the miracle and then want to go on a trip? You got your money, now you're home longer. Got a new house, can't come to church because I'm decorating it. Why y'all get the miracle and start giving the miracle time that Jesus deserves? What is wrong with y'all? All right, nobody's talking to me now. I'm about to stand up and start walking, but I said no. The thing is, the miracle became your problem. Because you never wanted Jesus, you wanted what he had to offer. Let me give an example. Janae, it's good to hear from you finally. But let me say this to three people. There was a supper that Jesus prepared. He said to his people, come and dine. Three of them said to him, Master, I can't come because a relative died. I must go see them. I don't hear my seasoned folk talking. Second one said, Master, I just bought some property and I must needs go see it. The third one talks about being married. Y'all ain't talk. Jesus said, go do as you say. Then he went and compelled all the strangers to come to the supper. When the strangers came and it was filled, those that went about doing their thing came back and said, can we sit? He said, your seat has been occupied. Some of you are going to get what you want from him and never get him. The issue is... Once you lose him, your miracle only lasts but so long. Disconnect the miracle from the miracle worker and you have a problem. I said I wanted to read three verses. I wanted to read three verses after that, John 3. Go back to verse 14. Put it on the screen. 
Go to 15. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. Now, that's the, go back. Now, that's the story. Three folk jump on this. Because if you read about the ship, the ship is between verse 14 and 15. See, you don't know that because you never went to your church Bible study. You just went to have church. Because in Bible study, you need time. Hold on now, because the Bible says in the Matthew version and the Mark version that when Jesus finished, he sent them into the ship and told them go to the other side. And he went alone into a mountain to pray. But John is not focused on the ship. I'm going to see you jump because John never wanted to leave his presence. So John is like, I don't even like that they even wanted to pull off without him. Y'all ain't. John's heart was back there with Jesus. Yep, I got help here. None over here. Verse 16, just so I can read it. And when the evening was come, his disciples went down. There you go, unto the sea. Another verse. Let them see it. So they know when. And he entered into a ship and went across to the other side. My last chapter in three points. I thought y'all would learn this. Oh no, I know I'm teaching the preachers too. They ain't gonna never tell me. I know I am. Luke chapter 9, verses 10, Dr. Barbara, and 11 only. Same story, except I told y'all he that this crowd did not follow him. What did I tell you? For the fishes. I'm going to ask you again. What did I tell you all? What did I tell all of you? So, let's read. And the apostles, when they were returned, told him all that they had done. He took them and went aside privately. Y'all, this is a doctor's version into a desert place belonging to the city called Bethsaida. Next verse. You left out, go on. And the people, when they knew it, followed him, and he received them, y'all ain't with me, and spake unto them of the kingdom of God and healed them. So what took long was not just his teaching, his compassion was while he was teaching, he was reaching. While he was teaching, he was reaching. You don't want nobody to rush with your situation. While he was teaching, he was also practicing. They were not there to eat. They were there to be healed. Good is money and we dying. New house and you got a hospital bed in your room. Brand new place to live, miracle place, and the whole bathroom filled with 22 bottles of prescription drugs. God gave you the house, but I can't find them in your house. I hate looking on my bedroom side 
and looking at five bottles of something I've never had to take in my life. No, I ain't going to never get adjusted. Because he's a God of miracles. I will never. I went to the doctor today to get an EKG. Got to wait till Friday to hear him tell me, your heart's doing so much better. I already know what he's going to say. Because on Christ the solid rock I stand. And I don't rush God. I don't put chronos on a Kairos moment. You don't tell the doctor I got to be back to work in 10 minutes. You won't be seen. You tell the job I can't come in today. I got a doctor's appointment. You go sit at the doctor five hours and come out with the same information. But can't come to church for three because you're living the information. No, no. I got to get God back in here before September's out. Because some of y'all going to miss it. But as for me and my house, don't you get jealous when I pull up with a miracle call or get another business. I don't hear nothing y'all got to say. Oh, Bishop, you got another call? Sure did. What does it say, Bishop? It says, and healed them that had need of healing. Let's read it all and give the three points. I'll shock you. And when the day began to wear away, which meant he started out healing. This is how the day started. Most of the day was spent with him healing people. They weren't even there when he started because it said, and then came the twelve. Where were y'all when folk were being healed? Home, resting, eating, sleeping, working a second job. Now I need God. I need God. And this is from the perspective of a doctor. Some of y'all tired because you work and you don't lift nothing. How you tired? Your job has no labor in it at all. Yep, you can tell the group they're trying to help each other, boy. Verse 12, I'm going to end good. They begin to where away then came the 12 and said master send this group away that they may go into the towns and countries round about lodge and eat get victuals for we are here in the desert place but he said to them give ye them to eat and they said we have no more but five loaves and two fish except we go and buy meat for all these people they have money Y'all missed it again. So let me say this for two folk who will jump. Money's not going to be your issue. Your issue is you don't have time. You're spending all your time making money. Money's your problem. See, I didn't mean to make y'all jump ahead of time. Y'all jumped on your own. Money excited you, a miracle didn't. Should we go and buy meat for all these people? For there were 5,000 men. And he said to his disciples, make them sit down by 50s in a company. And they did so. And he made them all sit down. Then he took the five loaves, two fish, looking up to heaven, blessed it 
break it, gave to the disciples. All four Gospels agreed on one thing, and I'm going to see who get it. That the first way to get a miracle is you got to look up. Uh-oh. Not look vertical. I mean, horizontal, you got to look vertical. Got to stop thinking in your head, who can I borrow this 500 from? Y'all got to stop thinking like that. You got to cast all your cares. I don't hear nobody on it. Give God a chance to be who he is. Boy, it's quiet in my church tonight. The quiet comes just before the storm. Got to hurry home before the storm come now. They all agree that he looked up, all four gospels said it. Number two, for those who scream, he blessed it. He blessed what? He blessed what shouldn't work. Two fish. Oh, y'all, five loaves. He treated it like it could do the job. Y'all, some of y'all got to act like the situation you're in is good enough for God to work with and stop panicking, looking for something different. Uh-oh, I got Deacon Cleveland pushing me now. He said, come on, stop thinking that you've got a better plan for yourself than God has for you. You'd rather put in three more hours overtime for work but not give God three hours for worship? That's why you're working. While the rest of us get miracles, hand over fist, and you trying to wonder how we doing it. And then they break it. Then they distribute it. I'm going to say something for this word break and see if 14 out of 100 of you jump up on your own. You know you're close to the miracle because you've been broken. You've also been blessed. You've also been lifted. Y'all it. God said, and after I bless you, I'm going to distribute you. Y'all it. You are a part of God's miracle. And after he makes you a miracle, you become a sign. Oh, y'all done forgot, y'all. I'm going to close right here. I'm done because I thought y'all really wanted to come here. Let me make this very plain. I believe that when people gather to hear the word of God, that if they show up for the right reason and digest it without question, it will become the meal that heals. Some of you may not know tonight's word was your prescription. Or should I say prescripture? Y'all in. And if you digested it and let the word get in your system, it'll make everything in your system start functioning as it ought to because it's the meal that heals. I got Chantel waving. I got the woman of God, three in the back. My last paragraph and then one statement. The word of God is mysterious, meaningful, and miraculous. Let me say that again. It's mysterious, meaningful, and miraculous. The more it's understood, the more it is digested, the more miraculous it becomes. When understood and digested, if you allow it to run its course, everything in you and about you that was offline will have to fall back in order because you sat and digested 
the meal that heals. When I preach it first Sunday, here's the problem that I'm going to have because I thought I had more people talking because it is amazing that out of a hundred of us in here, over 50 of you need a healing. Half of this congregation is harboring, nursing a sickness and have the nerve to sit here like you are all right. Now, some of you are wearing your problem with swag because it don't look as if it's as bad as it seems. But once you go home and take off your clothes and lay down, you in something close to feces. Word of God is mysterious, meaningful, miraculous. When it's eaten properly, it's the meal that heals. Now watch how I'm going to close this. The prophets in the Bible saw that people needed a word and then one of the minor prophets wrote in the text that there's a famine in the land not of food and water but for the word of God oh I didn't hear nobody said there's a yeah. one of the prophets said the major problem is not food gas prices groceries it's their uh, distaste for the word of God do we have to be in church to hear the word of God? You got to be in church to hear it properly. Can you pastor your own house? Can you preach? You know hermeneutics, homiletics? Have church at home. Then raise an offering amongst your family. Let's see how far your full-time ministry goes. Look at me. But there's a famine for the word of God. So God tells another prophet, feed them my word. And this is what it says for those who will scream. And when they tasted it, it was honey in the mouth and bitter when it went down. Uh -oh. Now that sounds like medicinal. That is not a meal. That's a meal that heals. Hold on. Honey, y'all don't want to hear about honey. Honey moves things through your system. So it was as honey in the mouth and bitter. Some of you like the prophetic because that's a piece of candy. You're going to be rich, you're healed. But now the next question is, how do you maintain it? Because a miracle comes with a manual. And the manual is the word of God. And the word of God says, if you don't focus on me, your second state will be worse. Oh yeah, you, you think a miracle means you okay? It means you okay for now. We're closing right here. I'm going to have a good night and I'm going to have a good stormy morning. If I don't lose electricity, I'm going to make me some eggs and grits myself for the first time and some pancakes. I'm going to do well in the storm. Because when they left the message, the storm came in the next verse. And we are one day from a so-called storm. So the miracle must happen tonight if on Thursday, see, we don't listen.
we don't listen. We're here eating all night before a so-called storm is supposed to happen tomorrow. And you worried about the storm more than the sermon? The storm is only as severe as the meal that you don't digest. I am, tonight, I'm not Peter, I'm John. I am a Jesus fanatic. I believe what doctors say about me. I believe that they are experts in their field of work. But if Luke can change his perception, then that means the only way your physician will change theirs is God has to give you a verified miracle. So that when they see you again, they be like, uh... Uh, what happened? You've been eating and you got to be bold enough to say, I went to Bible study and we read Luke, John, Matt. You've got to advertise God. Ain't no doc, I'm eating better, I'm a vegan. Stop lying. I'm drinking plenty of water. Stop lying. You drank plenty of water for two days. The way you know your body is responding to water is when you've never drank it and you start drinking a lot of it, you go to the bathroom more than ever. You can't even sleep. Every two and a half hours, you're waking up because your body is trying to dispose of all the other ingredients. So it makes your sleep uncomfortable. How does Bishop know all of this? Because the Bible said he taught them many things. Some of you are good at only the thing you know about, but you're pitiful in other areas. You need to be taught many things. Some of you, I'm not ready to teach it yet. You know a lot about a little. And you're threatening to take your little to a person that knows a lot about a lot. When I sit with people like Mr. Warren or a few names I can mention, they say, man, go ahead and say something. I'll be like, no, you talk. Those who know me, you meet me. We were with attorneys last night. I turned you on to one who turned you on to a greater one who turned you on to his mentor. All that for free in two hours. With access to Stetson in case you wanted to go. We're sitting. If I'd have kept speaking, because that's what he wanted to do. Bishop, he's an attorney. Bishop, let's talk about the Pete Diddy case and things, because he's an attorney. I said, nope, we're not talking about none of that. He said, what do you want to talk about? I said, let's talk about being a lawyer. How did you become who you are? I yield the floor. You talk, I listen. Some of y'all don't know how to yield the floor. You listen so you can talk. You don't listen with the intent to digest. And some of you are late bloomers. You're 40, 50, 60, 70, and even 80. You're a late bloomer. You've never listened well. But you got all this advice for people, and when you give it, the advice is solid, but your walk isn't. So it throws people off. They don't want to eat from you. Let's close with this, then stand giving and go home and y'all act like a storm really coming, okay? <laughs> Capture this, and I'll see if five people jump. When Jesus fed them two fish and five loaves, the Bible said they took it till they were full. But what they got before the meal was his word, which meant they were filled. Some of you have never been fulfilled. Y'all catch where I'm going now, don't you? 
you full, and some of you are full of, but you full. But you've never been fulfilled. Where your spirit and your flesh are satisfied. Everything I have came because of what I believed. I ain't have no money. I was in a worse situation than all y'all that come to me and hide things. Bishop, I need another job. I, was, I had children that I couldn't take care of, couldn't raise. Y'all ain't made no excuses that I did not have. Bishop, I'm sick. I can't move. I had a stroke, prostate, throat cancer. What are you talking about? What are y'all talking about? I've had to go through this on my own. You ain't the only one. I pay all the bills. You still ain't the only one. My whole family has hurt me. You are not the only one. I'm there for everybody, but ain't nobody there for me. You All I do is work, church, eat, sleep. Work, church, eat, sleep. I'm tired. You are not. But to whom much is given? You want much for little. All of you that claim you went to college, wave your hands again. I want to see if you lied. And let me say something to you. You know how long we had to study for finals? I'm talking to real college folk. Sleeping all. We took no doles. We took, we took Red Bull. We took five-hour energies. Some of y'all smoked a joint. We did so much. We cut on all the lights. Especially when we had to cram. No, no, you said you went to school. Some of y'all call yourselves what you call, but I can tell you're lying now. Because you've made no response to this. See, that online crap ain't a butt in the seat kind of thing. Butts in the seats mean you got to go to the place. And God said, I'm about to give you a miracle because you got butts in the seat. Ain't nothing like hearing the lecturer in person versus on Zoom. Ain't nothing like saying, I graduated Howard University and walked across the stage of Howard University. You know how many hours it takes to get a master's? They said a minimum 10,000 hours. A doctorate? Why y'all quiet now? A PhD? A thesis? You that lie don't even know these terms. A dissertation. 50,000 words. Without repeat and plagiary. No AI cheating. Oh, they got AI researchers to check AI cheaters. Back in my day, you had to use an old typewriter. Do the right spaces, check spell. 
then laminate and put it in a folder the right way. Present it. But do you know the reward for accomplishment? When they say, doctor somebody? The first thing it says is that person put in unusual amount of time. Shabak, we're getting close. No, no, look at me. We're about to be fulfilled. Touch a mind, tell them fulfilled. Hey, Bishop, didn't I tell you I wanted to shock you and give you something to go home and study? I don't lie. I keep my word. Here it goes for those who really research scripture. Y'all answer this. And they all ate 5,000 men, not including women and children. Therefore, the man, the young lad, didn't eat. And it was his. How you watch others enjoy what you can. No, no, he's a young lad. They ain't even ask him for it. They took it. But what you ain't going to jump with is because he just let it go without question because he was probably full of what he heard Jesus teach, he goes home with 12 baskets full of fragments. Y'all, he ain't got to worry about eating for a day. He's positioned to feed others. I told you I wanted to blow your mind, so I got one more thing. Then we're going to stay and give, and y'all go home, wake up early to go to work. Capture this, Bishop. Capture this, Elder Curry. Capture this, Rennes. Capture this, all of you who's got a mind to love the word of God. I want to see who catches it. You ready? The church is going to receive miracles, but there's a generation that's my age and older that needs to understand that the meal that heals is putting our hands by the next generation. They've got the message, but they need to see how you use it. We don't have the word for the next generation. We have the principles. They want to see what we're going to do with what they have to offer. And it's a miracle when two generations can work together simultaneously to, I don't hear nobody, to reach a common goal. When your child can tell you what they did wrong and know you ain't just going to go off and start swinging. Now, I'm an older man now, and I'm a parent, but let me talk to my people who won't talk to me. If I was young, I could not accept some of you as my parents. Your rules don't make sense. And you're only hounding on me because your life is boring. Don't use me as your excitement. I don't hear nobody. Learn to talk to me. Feed me. Lift me up. Before you break me, bless me. Y'all ain't talking. And after you break me, distribute me. None of them grown-ups at that desert had food but a child. You've got to know who you are to not be threatened by who's next. Well, that ain't the way we do it. Yeah, we also don't heat food up all the time in the oven no more. Not even you old the saints. Put it in the microwave. Put a wet napkin on top and that'll make it better. It'll keep it moist.
When I grew up, everything was done different. I just started to learn, Curry, how to use a crock pot. And all of them pots that you can leave meat in there for eight hours and go out. No, I don't feel good going out. I don't know what's going to happen to the pot. Now, I don't trust the pot. See, y'all different. I don't trust the pot. No, everything malfunctions. So how you trust in that and not God? You can't leave your house, come to his for a few hours and let the house stay there and no one's going to be okay? That boy left with enough food for him and his entire family. Because he had been gone to the fish market, never made it home for hours because he was listening to the best speaker ever known to man. And that was Jesus. I think I'd have stayed the whole time. If he's all of us wrapped up in one, I'd have been in church right now. I'd be like, man, I'm tired, but this dude can preach. You don't love God's word. You love his worth. I love his word. That's why he gives it to me. I love it and I love watching it work. We have less than two weeks to watch the phase of the miracle begin in our lives. Oh, I don't hear you. And in our families. And if I have a choice between the miracle and the miracle worker, I'll take the miracle worker. You can have the lamp that the genie came out of, but if the genie ain't in the lamp no more, that's just a lamp. And thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Light unto my path. Saints, children of God, seasoned citizens instead of veterans. Y'all have got to go back to believing what y'all told us. Your testimony's getting weak. Y'all have got to start walking like y'all used to. You got all these stories of miracles. He don't do them no more. I thought he was the same yesterday. Talk to me today. I thought y'all told me if he did it before. Y'all told me he's a right now God. The next time I preach, I'll be preaching one word from the word miracle. Two folk jump up, you'll be blessed, and I'll preach it in the Greek. But the word I'm going to preach on first Sunday concerning the meal that heals is one word, immediately. I will, I promise you. Immediately. Immediately. 